recognize this? Of course, it's the Moonlight Sonata of Beethoven. But do you recognize this? Or this? All three of those excerpts are from the Moonlight Sonata. Today we're going to look at the entire piece, but we're also going to answer the question, is the Moonlight Sonata overrated? So we'll explore some of the wonderful things about the Sonata, and we're going to look at all three movements. But before we get started, I want to welcome you to Learn and Love Music, and also make sure you subscribe. So let's get started. The first point I want to make about the Moonlight Sonata is that it's three movements. And we're going to look at all three of these movements, not just the first one, the popular one. It is more than just the name Moonlight. It is a sonata by Beethoven. It's actually, he did not name it the Moonlight. A critic named Rellstab named it. He named it Sonata Quasi Una Fantasia. It means sonata in the form of a fantasy. So we're going to look at all these movements and see how they fit into that description that Beethoven gave. Three points I want to make about the first movement. One, we've already talked about, the name. He did not name it the Moonlight Sonata. The next point I want to make is that in the title, he writes the word, uh, senza, don't change the pedal. Basically, he says senza pedal, in other words, to keep the pedal down through the whole thing. It doesn't really work on a modern piano because if you hold the pedal down for the whole piece, it gets really blurry. So what musicians do is they try to follow that somewhat by using what we call a shallow pedal. So I use a really shallow pedal. So we still get the effect of the blur without completely obscuring the, the notes. The third point I want to make is that Beethoven wrote this piece in cut time. We see that it, it has four beats in each measure. So one, two, three, four. So the whole idea of the piece is that instead of having four fast beats, it has two slow beats. So it feels like it's actually moving. It's not like a funeral march. It has movement to it. A lot of people sort of become more lugubrious about their interpretation of this, so it has to move. So let's, I'm going to play the first section of the first movement, and of course all of you know well, but let's hear an excerpt from the first movement. look at the second movement. This is the shortest of the movements and it has three things that we want to listen for. One is the key. The key is D flat major. You may think that that has nothing to do with the C sharp minor because the two outside movements, movements one and movement three are in C sharp minor, but C sharp minor is a minor key. All you do is move one note to make D flat major. So, what I say about this is that it's a rose between two thorns. The, two, the thorns are the, the opening movement, and also the last movement, also in C-sharp minor. 
This is a breath of fresh air. It's the lightest movement, it's the shortest. It's like a little intermezzo. It's really, really quite beautiful. The other thing I want to point out is phrasing. Beethoven is very exact about phrasing. Sometimes when I teach, I often put words to music. And I'm going to share a couple of these little spots with you in this phrasing of the second movement. And um, it opens this way. And he puts a staccato note at the end of the phrase. So what I want to do is just to put words to it. We go, we go to there. We go to the staccato note. We go to there, then hop to there. We go to there. Then hop to there. So it gives us this sense of understanding the clarity that Beethoven put into the phrasing of this piece. Just for fun, I come up with some other things as well. One of the things in the trio section is that he uses that same idea. When he gets to the B section of the trio, we hear this. All I can think of is yawn, oh, yawn, yawn. So he's sort of having fun with us with the, a little bit of syncopation and with that feeling of yawning through it. So let me play a little excerpt from the second movement, a little intermezzo in the middle, and see if you can listen for the phrasing and also the beautiful color of D-flat major. Here is the second movement of the Moonlight Sonata. This is the most difficult movement. It's the longest movement and quite technical. I want to share a story with you about this piece. I've never performed this piece in a legitimate concert before, but I did accompany a silent movie once. It was The Phantom of the Opera, the early 1920s version with Lon Chaney, kind of a black and white silent film. I accompanied the 75-minute movie with excerpts from classical piano music. At the very end, when the Phantom is chased through the city of Paris, he's brought up to the edge of the water and he throws his hands up in, in triumph and then jumps in the water, is chased off into the water, and he drowns. I used for the chase through Paris this movement, and it's exciting. I think it perfectly showed, gave us that sense of tension. That's what this movement is all about. It's about virtuosity and musical tension and drive. It's really a fabulous, fabulous piece. But it does set between the beautiful first movement, moonlight, well, we don't want to say moonlight, that wasn't Beethoven's term, and then the delicate little intermezzo, and then this wild ride for the third movement. Let's look at some of the details of the third movement that make it so exciting. One of the things Beethoven likes to do is he likes to use sforzandos to present this explosiveness. What's really exciting about it but, is that he sh puts the sforzandos in at the end of the phrase. So we're waiting for that last explosion at the end of the rising line. Here's the way it starts. <laughs> You 
usually accents are put in the first beat. We put it in the last beat. So it makes it really almost like a shock. Some other things we want to look at, he does have a B theme. This is a rondo form. In other words, these themes come back again and again. But he does provide a little bit of respite with a piano theme. But even though it's a beautiful lyrical theme, you can still feel the tension underneath with the what we call Alberti bass, moving line, left hand. But the beautiful theme above in a minor key, this is the second theme. And one other point I want to make is that at the end of the piece, he has this very unusual passage that's stuck in between the tension chords and the lyrical chords. He does this kind of wild arpeggio. So we hear this opening theme again. Here. And he does it again. And back to the, the, the B, the C line. show exactly what that is. It, it almost adds even more tension to what is already a very tension-filled piece. The very end of the piece has one last moment of repose. As we come down from the excitement, you'll hear this arpeggio and then a chromatic scale going up and a little cadenza that makes it sound like maybe he'll end the piece quietly. Let's find out whether he does or not. excitement in this last movement of the Moonlight Sonata. So, to answer the question, is this an overrated piece? I don't think it is. If you look at all three movements, certainly if you just play the first movement, that's not a complete piece, but it provides a wide range of moods and excitement in this piece. So I think it's one of the most wonderful Beethoven sonatas. I will be playing the entire Moonlight Sonata on a companion video, so you can hear the beautiful piece from beginning to end. Hope to see you next time on Learn and Love Music. <laughs>